Hello everyone, welcome back to Elise Loves Paper, and if you're here for the first time, welcome, welcome. Um, I'm Elise, and I'm actually filming this today on International Scrapbooking Day, and I thought it'd be a really fun day to go through this monster pile of layouts that I have sitting over there that I need to put away. Um, so I just thought it'd be fun to do a layout share. We'll flip through it. Hopefully I won't talk too, too much um, and make this super long, um, but let's get started. I'm showing you the back because I flipped the pile over so that I can kind of go from the oldest that I've made starting in January, I believe, um, until the one I made earlier this morning today. So here we go with no further ado. This is going to be like a surprise for me too, because some of these, like I said, I haven't seen since January. So let's see what we've got. Okay. This first one, this is my son back from when he was itty bitty and this had a fun story behind it um the journaling says at this age ian was always lining up some set of objects by color size or both a boy after my own organization loving heart for sure um he was so funny he would line everything up we have a picture of him lining books up as well uh, and i just love the rainbow mirroring the rainbow here uh, fun layout okay sorry about the glare again so here's this one. I'm not sure how successful this one was. I really love this paper in the background and I think the title gets a little lost here. Um, but overall, it's a really fun layout. I like the screen and how it plays against everything there. So this was another old set of photos helping my, uh, my kids helping my parents in their garden. I did love these clusters and how they turned out. I remember I was so picky. I laid them down and I was like barely turning them up so that I could uh, get some glue under it without disturbing the way I had laid them out. And I really like those three. That makes me super happy. Okay, this one. <laughs> this one I had sitting on my desk for a very long time. I believe that this is all this stuff, almost all of it, is from a um, hip kit. And I always cut off my branding strips and I want to use them. And what I had this idea... We're using this as the background. I did put some, I think that's gesso in the background to kind of tone it down. And then I wanted to take those branding strips, chop them up into kind of randomly sized strips, and then I stitched them together and glued them down. And then I didn't know what to do on top. I had a very hard time figuring out what I could do that wouldn't cover up all that hard work I did in the back because I really like the way it looked. And this is what I came up with. So I had seen, we had this tag, this acetate tag in the kit. You see, it's got a tag on it. And I was also struggling to use that because it really didn't show up a lot, but I used that to my advantage here. And then I ended up getting, um, using some acetate sheets that I had and making three more tags to put the photos on. I kind of hung them on this little banner here and then embellished around it. I'm really happy with how that turned out. By the way, these letters I love. They're from one of the newer Jen Hadfield lines and I think that they're sold looking like a uh, letter board, but they have this very subtle, I wouldn't even call it a shimmer or a shine, but it is like, it's like a white metallic and it's just beautiful. That's that one. Let's see what we have here. Oh, this one. I believe this was from a uh, one of my very earliest ones. I don't know if I filmed it and put it up, but this was a uh, boys, not just for boys kit club, I believe, because yes, it has these um, die cuts in it and everything. Again, another very busy background. I tried to tone it down with some stuff in the back. I'm not sure how much that worked because it was difficult to embellish, but in the end, I like how it turned out. This one. Oh, this one was so fun. So I accidentally got two of this paper, I believe. And so I was not feeling the circles, but decided to challenge myself. And then I ended up going with circular photos for three of these. And then I put this one with a frame around it. So this is, it says beautiful boo. This is Winnie, our oldest dog. Um, we call her Winnie Boo though, or Boo for short. So that's why the title. And I really like how this played with the circles and everything. I'm happy with how that one turned out. Okay. And this one, I know that this was in my 
Kit Ketchup that I put up. Uh, this one was just trying to use up a whole bunch of those stickers and I love this one. So if you're interested in this one and I think a couple of the ones that are coming up, I do have a video. I will try and link it somewhere on here if I can figure YouTube out <laughs> so you can go see the kit that these came from and all the layouts that I made together. Nope, I'm putting it upside down. Okay. This is another one. Again, I have people's faces covered because I don't necessarily have their permission. Uh, I love the strips in the back of this one. I like the colors and everything. Fun layout. Here's another one. This is definitely from a Not Just For Boys Kit Club because it has came with this cut file. Um, again, go see that video if you want to hear more about all of these. I love having a white frame with a lot going on in the middle. It's one of my favorite ways to do a layout. Oh, see, I gutted this paper here. I love this one too. This was a very successful kit catch up, I have to say. So please do check that video out if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, this is when I got obsessed with doing this. I had seen somebody on Instagram do it. I noted her in that video, but taking a very busy paper and then using it as a, a frame basically for a less busy paper and your stuff in the middle. And I just adore how that turned out. And I've done it on a couple other layouts since then. So fun layout. Yeah, so I stitched on this one and this is what I do in the back with the stitching after I pull the, the threads to the back as I tape over them with washi tape to make sure that they don't come undone. So this one I had actually filmed a process video for. I did not put it up. Let me know if you'd be interested in it though, um, but it just ended up not being one of my favorite layouts. I really, really struggled because again, there's a lot going on in the background. So trying to make sure that the things that needed to stand out stood out was difficult. Um, but all in all, it's is a decent layout. Okay, <laughs> this one I had to giggle about my title. I love fun titles. So my daughter, we affectionately call her the twig because she is tiny for her age. Um, but man, when we go to the trampoline park and they have this rope climbing wall, she always will beat anybody that she competes with. She loves to challenge her friends to go up there and they think, you know, her being as little as she is that they'll win easily, but jokes on them. She's like a little spider monkey and she goes on up. But I love this picture. Her friend, I believe, took it of her um, showing her muscles. So I had to play off of that. Um, and I really love this cluster. So pretty. Okay. And this one, <laughs> she will kill me for putting this one on the internet. <laughs> But uh, she got her hair done, and I do want to make a companion uh, layout for this one. So it's not a double page spread, but they go together where it shows the, the you know, in progress and then what it looked like after. Uh, but this one, I loved this paper. I believe it's by Pink Fresh in the background. I only had a strip of it left, and so I decided to use acrylic paint. I mixed my own to kind of put it behind there, and then I tried this, like, um, you know, the tone on tone embellishing which I've never done before and that was a lot of fun. I do believe we're still within that kit catch up, all these ones that I've been showing you. So if you want more info, go see that. Um, but I love this one as well. I love how bright it is. <laughs> Face, ah, so fun. So this one's still in that kit catch up here. This one's really fun. I like how it looks like papers are just laid on there and even with the background here. Uh, and the title shows up a lot better actually on camera than I think it does in person, which is opposite of what it usually is, funny, funnily enough. Um, so that's a fun, bright, happy one. Actually, I wonder if we're in a kit catch up that you guys have not seen yet. There is one that I have filmed that I have not put up yet. So <laughs> if these are new to you, <laughs> surprise, spoiler alert, <laughs> that should be coming up soon. Apologies. Um, yes, because this was the first one I made with that second kit catch up. I was really happy with how this one turned out. It's, again, a very busy background. I like to challenge myself, apparently, with busy backgrounds. Um, and it just, I rarely use a black and white photo, but I think it really pops here and it works well. And I love this one and how I was able to use the paper to tell a kind of tough story, but in a memorable way. So yes, kit catch up.
<laughs> Please go see that video once it's up. Hopefully. Sorry for the break there. I had to pause because I had not covered up somebody's face that I did not have permission to share. So this one is showing a <laughs> the first official date my daughter ever had. Now she's in fifth grade and she's dating this boy. And I had to laugh because... It was, you know, as innocent as you think it would be, but um, his mom brought him and we had a good giggle because apparently my daughter Layla had been just asking and scheming and telling everybody that we're going to go meet them there. Um, they want to go skating. They're going to be there. We need to be there. He's never been skating before. And so he had a time of it, but you know, young love, what will you do? So this one I did struggle, I remember, with embellishing it because of the colors in the background. Uh, this came from a kit, I think one of the more recent hip kits. And I, I had a tough time with the embellishments in that one. It was a very springy kit, and I think I've talked before how springy kits are a little challenging for me. Um, but in the end, I like how it turned out. So this one's a funny one. This is from that same hip kit. Uh, I had to laugh because my dog is the master of the side eye. This is our young dog named Willow. Um, and I just loved these photos and I felt like they worked really well here. And I like this uh, cluster up here that I built. Um, I love the long title. I love a long title, period. You'll come to see. And it's just nice and pretty. Okay, this one, here I go again. I have to say, I'm gonna come up. I am very annoyed. This keeps happening to me with this ink. Uh, I used an ink s to splatter on there and for some reason I don't get these nice droplets. And I don't know if it's because of the paper that is just more absorbent than it has been on other papers that I've done it on or if it's the ink itself, I don't know. But it really, really irritated me because you know, <laughs> there's no fixing that once you've done it. Um, but otherwise I, I did like this one. This is another challenging one to, to embellish. Cause again, I went with that really busy background. I think this one definitely would have benefited by painting gesso over the back to kind of give it a resting place, but it is what it is. I love the big black title. Uh, I like a few of the clusters. Orange is just not my thing. And this hip kit had a lot of orange in it. So it was a little bit of a struggle for me, but in the end, I think it turned out okay. Um, now, when I say these are from the hip kits, just know, I've mentioned it before, I very rarely ever use only stuff from the hip kit. So you might see things in here that are from different places, like this big ampersand, I believe, is from Studio Calico. Uh, th these are from Rosie's Studio, I believe. Um, this is from a Simple Stories collection, I believe. So just keep that in mind if you're looking at these and... It, when I say it's from a kit, that means it's mostly from a kit, but not all the way from a kit. And this one. So now we've entered into the Crop and Crate Delivered territory. So I am still working my way <laughs> through finishing layouts from that. And I will tell you that very rarely do I ever follow the directions exactly. I never embellish exactly like they show us and stuff. And most of these, if not all the ones that I'm going to show you, I have deviated so far from the original class that um, I don't feel like I'm, I'm giving anything away. Uh, but this was from a Paige Evans class, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> Paige is the master of what I would call like repetition and Oh, I don't know, because she has such a busy look to her pages, but when you actually look at them, they're really not that busy. It's just that the patterns and the colors look busy, but when you, the repetition kind of reigns it all in and stuff. So it's not generally my style, but I really like how this one turned out. We were shopping at a Home Goods, and I, despite her face right here, I promise she asked me to take this picture, so it was done with consent. Um, but I thought that the, the uh, wreath that she had on her head matched well with the colors here. So I went with that. And please tell me that I'm not the only one. Awesome Blossom, for some reason in my head, every time I read that, I keep hearing the, the old Nickelodeon slew your shorts, the awful waffle. And I don't know why. <laughs> please tell me I'm not the only one who remembers that because my brain is, it just has it on repeat right now. So that's that one. 
Oh, this is one that got stuck in there because I, I, I recorded the voiceover for the process video for this one. I believe it's the video that I posted just before this one. So this is not from Crop and Create Delivered. It's from one of my um, Kit Catch Up videos. But I love the central layout with the white and then a little bit of a border. So if you want more info on this, it's in the Kit Catch Up that's, I believe, coming up soon. But there's also a process video. It's the one right before this. So if you're interested, go check that one out. Almost done. Are we back to, nope. <laughs> yes, this is another Crop and Create Delivered. This was a class by Victoria Calvin. She had used a lot of Doodlebug in there. And I find Doodlebug very difficult to work with. I think it's super cute and I love the layouts that other people do with it, but it just doesn't quite go with my style. And so again, I kind of went my own way with this. This is from the latest hit kit, these papers here, I believe. Um, this rainbow one in the background and this stripey one, those are Doodlebug papers along with some of the stickers in here. Um, but, you know, again, I went so far afield that this is not at all what was taught in the class um, for the most part. But this is a fun layout because Layla was so excited because her room had been this very light ballet pink for the longest time. And she is not a girl who loves pink. Um, and so we repainted her room and I wanted to memorialize that. She had so much fun. Okay. Oh, we only have two left. Almost there. Oh, no, three left. Ha, one was hiding. Okay, another Crop and Create. This was from a Becky Adams class. Again, I went very far afield. I did, she was talking about inspiration and where you can get inspiration from, which is where these arches came from. But otherwise, I just kind of went my own way. This is about my son's eighth birthday, I took him to Dollywood um, up in Pigeon Forge and he was not a fan of roller coasters. So we also went to Wonderworks and an arcade instead. Um, but I really, really like the way that this ended up with the tickets behind and this whole like diagonal layout. I think it's really successful and it kind of, the very linear aspects play nicely against the arches there and the curves in the eight. Love it. I think I just saw that a butterfly fell off. Yep, here, let me stick it back on. Right there. Yeah, I'm gonna have to stick that with some glue. This is another Crop and Create one. This is the other one from Becky's class. But again, I really de deviated pretty far. So I don't know that you would recognize it. Um, I loved this paper from Maggie Holmes. I love the brightness and I like, that these two papers here play against the colors in our photo to bring it all together and tone it down. That's a fun one. I love these acetate pieces. They're difficult to use, they're difficult to attach, but I was able to shove it underneath, <laughs> underneath and attach it under the photo. Same with this one under here, over here. Okay. And last but not least, one that I finished this morning, I believe. Yes. So this is from one of the Vicki Booten classes, again, very far afield. She had made a two-page layout and she had her title up here. It was very different. So anyway, this is what I ended up with and I am a really big fan. I struggled with this one, I will admit, because I wanted the photo here. Sometimes I just feel like a photo belongs in a certain place and here I felt it belonged right here. Um, I think it's because it nestled into this here um, and then I went and did the title, but then it was feeling kind of unbalanced. I found this embellishment and it ended up falling right there and it was just perfect. So I kind of went with that and then I was like, oh, maybe I should play with the circles. Um, and so I, I did this kind of scattering of circles. These are chipboard pieces here. This one is the same one. I just cut it. Um, so I have that going on here and I did bring in some circles over here to balance. This was already printed on the paper, but I did add one there. Um, and then I added this because it felt very un balanced with this over here and the photo but I think it turned out really nicely and I'm very happy with it I will say this is one of my favorite Vicki Booten collections the print shop collection and I have hoarded it I was so excited to see that she used it in her crop and, crop and create class these letters here though I did not originally get them these came with the class kit I was just so nervous to use them because they're so different all of the letters are kind of they have different patterns and some of them are gold foiled and some of them are mostly white versus some that are mostly black. And I just thought they'd be very difficult to use. But in her class, I could see the different ways she used it and I really liked it. And then I ended up 
trying it here and, and I really like the way that it ended up. So anyway, that's all the layoffs. I will, I have no idea how many it is. I'm gonna count it up because I think I'd be interested to see how many layouts I basically did in the months of January, February, March, and April, even though I did finish the last two, you know, the first week of May. And I will pop that number on the screen here because I always like to see how many um, layouts other people are creating. So I hope you have a wonderful International Scrapbooking Day and you get to actually spend a good deal of time scrapping. Um, have a lovely weekend and see you later. Bye.